let's get to predictions. Um, and as some people know, I didn't give my predictions on any other show I was on this last couple of days. I told everybody, you got to wait for tonight. So here it is. But we are going to start with our guest, uh, Matt. After looking at last week and looking at your team, how do you think this one's going to go? So I'm going to go Texas 26-20. I really haven't moved off of my uh, early prediction. I said 23-20. I just bumped it up a little bit because of what I, what I saw out of the Michigan offense. Um, I think what I kind of said about the Michigan offense and team in general, it's kind of like driving on a highway but with one lane. Like you, you there's not much room for error. Like the room for error, if Michigan turns the ball over and isn't winning the turnover battle, I don't think you win this game. If they're missing field goals, I don't think you win this game, which I don't think is going to happen because I, I think we both have great kickers. Yeah. Um, but they have way more – we have way more room of error than you do, in my opinion. So I think we do end up winning 26-20. I think it's going to be hard for um, Michigan to manufacture points. Like I said, unless someone just steps up at the wide receiver position, you can't rely on Colson Loveland the whole game. Eventually that is going to figure it out if it works in the beginning because I have a feeling Texas will probably bracket him. I see a lot of cover one and cover two from Texas. If they do cover two, they'll probably just bracket Colson Loveland with the other safety and basically make it a cover one situation. And then Johnny Nansen, I, I forgot to talk about him, and I should have. He came over from Arizona. Arizona. He was their defensive coordinator there last year, and he's our linebackers coach this year. We were able to give him a pay raise, and he's Steve Sarkeesian's buddy. So he's like, sure, screw it. Let's go be the linebacker coach at Texas after Jeff Choate went to, went to Nevada. And he is very schematically versatile. Like, there's defenses that we ne have never played under Pete Kwiatkowski that we played um, versus Colorado State. We played a cover th or uh, cover three – or sorry, three high safety defense. PK has never done that at Texas, never. So that's Johnny Nansen. We played a bare front defense with three defensive – or two de um, defensive tackles and one nose tackle plus a couple other edges, which I think they will use that versus Michigan because that is used to stop the run. Um and it's going to be interesting what other wrinkles and aspects he does put. I'm not going to mention the other one. Like he played a dollar defense, which is six defensive backs. I don't think you're going to see that because I don't think Mission's going to be, you know, throwing it all over the yard. Now, maybe if it's like a third and 11 situation, you'll see that. But I think you're going to see the bare front for sure in this game. So I think Texas is able to score. I think they're able to, when I say this, run enough, kind of like what we did at Alabama. Last year at Alabama, we had 38 pass attempts. 37 run attempts, but we only ran the ball for 2.9 yards per carry. Steve Sarkeesian wants to run the football. His basis of his offense is RPO inside zone run. You're going to see that to death. And if you can't stop the run, especially you're going to get killed by it, but he's still going to try to run. Even if he can't, the reason people always bring up the Washington game, he got away from it is because the running backs fumbled. I don't expect the running backs to fumble this game. What I am worried about those blitzes that Michigan does bring can these guys pick it up in the passing game? I trust Jaden Blue because Jaden Blue's been there. Jaden Blue's super talented. He was the number one running back coming out of high school a couple years ago and then decided to skip his senior, years in, senior season, and he fell to number four or five for whatever reason. But the guy's super talented. And then can Trey – so can Trey Wisner and Jarrett Gibson, the freshman, who is also highly talented, the number four running back out of high school this year, can they pick up the blitzes? Jared Gibson, to me, honestly, has the most juice out of the room. He He's pretty good in the, out of the backfield catching and also running. Jane Blue, I expect him in the slot as well because he's probably the best pass catcher we've had at the running back position in a long time. So I think Texas is able to do enough offensively, and I think they're able to contain Michigan with their, with their defense versus their offense, and I think Texas comes away with it 26-20. All right. Okay. TJ? So – I, uh, going into, you know, prior to, uh, you know, our week one game, I was, I was definitely in a more uh, optimistic, uh, uh, view of this week two game. Now I do believe that Michigan can win this game. I do believe that Michigan, if they do, if they hit on the keys that I have, you know, I spoke about earlier, which is limit them to field goals, uh, you know, sustain offensive drives and, uh, you know, improved quarterback play, we can win this game. But I am not predicting us to win this game. I apologize, Wolverine Nation, but I Ooh. cannot. I cannot. I cannot do a disservice. I have to go with what I feel. I'm sorry, Keegan. I apologize. 28 17, Texas. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was surprised by that. That just happened. That is what it is. I hate it. I fucking hate it. 28 17, Texas. Man, yeah, I'm more okay. optimistic optimistic than you are. Jeez. 
I am so worried about our offense, man. I'll be honest. I am I am so damn concerned about this offense. I am so damn concerned about the quarterback play and in uh and in, in running the run like the offensive line. I don't know if like here's the problem though. If this was a week seven game, it's week two. We have so much we have to clean up. Like I don't I'm just concerned we're not gonna be able to fix this in time. Like I do yeah. believe we're a good team. I do believe we're talented. I think we have um, you know, we definitely have a championship caliber defense. We have a championship caliber kicker. We have a championship caliber punter, but this offense is not gelled yet. This offense is so inexperienced. Now, granted, again, let me just, our playbook is limited. I don't even know what this offense is yet. Okay. So like, I'm not even, I'm not, I can't say I have any conclusions. I'm taking this a game at a time right now, but I am just concerned about this quarterback. Like we saw the wide receivers three for 15, three receptions. That's our leading wide receiver. That's not going to cut it against Texas. They're they're definitely better than Fresno State. So especially defensively, like I'm just, I am concerned. I'll just lay this before I move on to you, John. This is my biggest yeah. concern. We cannot sustain offensive drives, thus putting our defense in a very bad position because they're on the field all day, and then they get worn out, and then Texas is able to run the score a little bit. That is my concern, and then also not being able to capitalize in the red zone, having to rely on our field goal kicker. But we'll see. I mean, I may, I want to be wrong as hell right now. Like, I'm going to be real with you. Like, I do not want sure. to be – I want to be so wrong. Um, So we'll see, though. But I cannot – like, if I feel it, it's, if my gut's telling me, I'm going to I'm gonna say it. So it is what it is. Uh, yeah. Hoping for the victory. Hoping to, hoping to see Michigan do the damn thing. And, uh, you know, let's get it. You know, like, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm coming into the game, horns down, F those dudes. But, you know, that's just what – that's the prediction. It is what it is. And I think worst case scenario, I would agree with you, is kind of like the Georgia Clemson game. Like Clemson's defense kept them in that game and they just could do nothing offensively to where they were dead tired by the end of the game. And then that's when Georgia piled it on. Like that's worst case scenario. I don't think that's going to happen, but could it happen if you guys are just completely inept offensively? Absolutely. Uh, I also think I didn't bring this up and I should have. We have a new punter. He punted one time. So that's that's a a bit concerning, I will say. I think Jeff Banks is an excellent special teams coach. Like, our special teams has been phenomenal since he's been here. So, I'm not yeah. really concerned about, like, getting it blocked or anything. But that could change the – this type of game, that could change the game if he shanks one and you guys get the ball like, the 38-yard line. Because that gives you points. So, we always promised we'd keep it real here. And so, TJ is just doing that. Um, and, and look, I, I do think that's, like, the nightmare scenario. Um, if the offense just can't figure it out, I see that as, as the nightmare scenario. Um, I'm going to be slightly more optimistic and my prediction is going to be 23, 21 Michigan last second field goal wins the game for Michigan. I think it's going to be very, very tight, (laughs) very, very close. Um, it's going to be a dog fight. If this was last year, I'd say Michigan wins by a couple of touchdowns, uh, similar to Washington, but tighter than that game. But I do think that with the offensive struggles, they, they, they just need to find enough in terms of packages to be able to pull enough together where Will Johnson can get an interception pick six, and then you get enough to just cobble together two touchdowns on offense. And I think it's doable. Um, and because of that, I'm going 23-21 Michigan, last second field goal wins it. And I think time of possession is going to be huge because, like I said, I think you guys want to play keep away. And then people say third down. Well, I think just they have to win on first down. First down is going to be the important, most important down for Michigan because if you get, let's say, it's second and ten, Michigan cannot live in that because then you're basically – you have to get six yards on second down. Otherwise, you're basically done. I don't – I personally don't trust, and I, I'm sure you guys are on the same page. Like, if it's third down and five for you guys throughout the night, like that's a down you can kind of live with, but anything more than that is it's really hard. Yeah. I mean, look, we got to stay ahead of the chains. We have to sustain drives. We cannot, that is, that is the way to succeed against you guys. Uh, you know, listen, I'm hoping the defense locks you guys down and then we can just have multiple attempts at getting points. You know, I mean, I, I, I hope that happens. You know, I'm excited to see, listen, we're going to, we're going to see wink Martindale's defense in full effect. We're going to see Michigan's best shot here. They're going to they're going to give it everything they got to win this. They've been preparing all summer. So has Texas. These teams have been preparing all. We've talked about this, right? So we're going to find out what the real deal is. Like we're going to learn a lot week two. We're going to learn a lot about Texas. We're going to learn a lot about Michigan. 
we're going to see the reality of things. So I'm very interested to see this. Now, is it a conclusion? Now, does this game determine the season? Absolutely not. These teams will continue to grow, learn, improve. But uh, it's still going to be a major indicator of where these teams are, uh, you know. And I'll tell you right now, man, if I am wrong, which I hope I am, I don't want to be right, uh, then, listen, that postgame show is about to be freaking lit. And, uh, you know, I saw a comment where it's like, oh, TJ, got to eat crow. If we went good, I will take that L. I will take – I will gladly take the L on my prediction. I want to be wrong. It is far – it is far more important to me that Michigan wins than me be right, okay? Like, that's, I don't give a shit about being – well, I mean – I, my, my intent is to be right. That's my, you know, I don't want to like lie to you guys, but I much prefer Michigan prove me wrong than me be right. That's way more important at the end of the day for me. So, but yeah, I mean, we'll find out, man. That, that, that post game show is going to be crazy. One way or and another, I, it's going to be crazy. And I will say that um, Michigan has, of course, broken the, uh, the record for wins in a row. Um, so the last record was 28 straight wins from. Uh, get this, 1901 to 1903, Michigan had 28 straight wins under Fielding Yost, known for its, you know, point a minute mm-hmm. offenses, right? Yeah. We have a show off that. Yeah. We have a show point a minute. Yeah. Michigan has now gone 29 straight regular season games. That's huge. That's crazy. So, I mean, and Jerome Moore Michigan hasn't, history. the best Jerome run in Michigan Moore history. Moore hasn't lost a game yet, too, as, as head coach, even though. You know, people can argue how much the interim head coaches uh, ones, but I, I can't. I mean, it counts in his record. So at the end of the day, he hasn't lost as as head coach, um, and I think he'll just find enough, just just enough to like get us to get Michigan through that game. 